The one with the nonsense said the info. Hello. Thank you. 
minutes to close. If we can see the number of these stats in the first 45 minutes position, 40 to 60, clearly a very absurdity to the side. Two shots on two. Good evening, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as we speak right now, the host, uh, the our, our uh, facilitator is already in the house. In the person of Her Royal Majesty Adaku Chidume Okoro, he is a member of ICANN Council. And uh, she's been here with us for a while now. So this session will be the third series, third of the series. So she has a very busy day. While we are still admitting people, I think uh, it's time to let the floor open for her to come in and uh, carry on. Now, this, this event is being streamed live on YouTube on our uh, paid television uh, channel. So this event is actually brought to you by Page Platform. Professional Page is known as Professional Accountants Group Email, made of ICANN members that have come together to make a difference in our nation, Nigeria. And we are so happy to have our Royal Majesty Adako Chidime Okoro keen into our vision. And we are also keen to have hers as well because we are all partners in progress. Um, you're welcome on board. The floor is yours now. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Good evening madam. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, madam. Good evening. Good evening, it's madam. My, Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. It's my pleasure to be with us once more. Today it's our page. Please, can you mute everybody? Okay. In our mentoring series, Agriculture Export Mentoring Series. I'm sure as many of us as are here today that found time to be here. If you've been with us for the first and the second series, it means uh, it's exciting enough to still maintain your interest to be here for the third time. But if this is the first time you're joining us, you're welcome on board. I only request that you sit back, enjoy the discussion, try and learn as much as possible because in the world we are in, knowledge is power. Information is power. So whatever you're able to learn, 
sometime, someday, in one area of life or the other, you find an application for it. So I encourage us to pay attention um, while I run through what I have for us today. There will be time for question and answer. So if you have occasionally, I might be talking. Paige, please, can you mute everyone? As we run, be pausing if need be to take a comment to uh, stop for people that may wish to ask for clarification or questions. We will devote at least 25 to 30 minutes for questions. Thank you and uh, once more welcome to today's session. Our table of contents We will start by our introduction. For today's introduction, I want us to recall that in my earlier teachings, I made us to understand that keying into agri-exports should be seen as a sustainable business capable of transforming one's financial story for good if handled with absolute dedication and focus. Remember again, I said, and I have to repeat, agri-exports is not a deal, but a business. It's not a deal, it's a business. Meaning is a business you need to nurture, to grow, to prosper, to fruit for you to harvest. It's not a deal. Talking about deal, deal means a one-time activity that you hope to make a kill. But agri is a business. You need to not try to grow for you to have a good harvest. Today, again, I make bold to tell us that agri business, with all its associated value chain, as old as it is, can be adjudged the most stable form of business. The reason being that we are talking about food. Food has no substitutes. <laughs> you will agree with me that Microsoft is yet to develop a software that will act as a substitute for food. I haven't seen any. If you've seen any, please don't hesitate to let me know. So food, it's indispensable. It's just like the air we breathe. You can't do without food, just like you can't do without breathing in air. So as there are human existence on this planet Earth, food will be needed. Agri will continue to be a business. Excuse me one moment. So like I said, agri will continue to be a business, not just, not just for today, for as many years as there are still to come, uh, that we have existence on planet Earth. Hold on for me a little. Okay. Please, um, Paige, if you're there, okay. Oh. Then, having said that, we go to 
Paige, please, can you help me screen? I can't see mine again. Okay. Yeah. Are Let you me there? Know. Yes. Yes, I'm here. So, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get back to my slide. Okay. I don't know uh, what happened. Uh, yo, 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 yo. But it's give me a little time, a little time, a little time. Yeah. Try. Yeah. I was actually trying to admit. Uh, no, don't Some admit members. anybody. No, don't admit okay. them. I, I, I'm taking care of that. Okay. Okay, so just give me a few seconds. Let me get back to my slide. Okay. Okay. I think uh, I'm back now. Okay. So that's by way of uh, introduction. So, so long as there is human existence on planet Earth, food will be needed. Agric will continue to be a big and sustainable business, which we, we can't do without. The world over also, you will agree with me that oil and gas as an energy source is becoming gradually replaced with alternative sources of energy, including solar, wind, geothermal, and biofuels. Developed countries have put a time frame within which clean energy will totally replace oil and gas in their automobile and other applications. The unacceptable health hazard from carbon emission arising from the use of fossil fuels has further endangered the oil and gas business. Therefore, agribusiness presents a sustainable and viable alternative. In this period of new normal, owing to series of disruptions traceable to COVID-19 pandemic, it is considered the right time to allow some career disruption to our already established career and business paths. This, you will do yourself a word of favor by keying into agric. I describe agric as the big business. In essence, the time to take the leap is now. The agricultural big business is made up of global value chain. You can be a player by keying into any of the stages in the value chain. These stages are, you can be a farmer, you may wish to be an agrochemical merchant. You can also farm inputs do farming puts multiplication and supplies. You may wish to invest in warehousing and silos uh, provision. You can also key in by processing some of the agri produce or packaging. Transportation and logistics, business consultancy, which is very relevant to those of us that are professionals in this house today. You can also engage in freight forwarding. Or where we have our main area of focus, you can be an agri commodity exporter. But for the purposes of this mentoring series, 
we are focusing mainly on agri exports. And the exports arm of the agri value chain is the zenith of the agri business value chain. As professionals, the export aspect of the value chain and provision of consultancy services to businesses engaged in agri exports will challenge our intellect and give us a needed job satisfaction of operating within a niche market. I will pause here by recapping our previous two lessons so that for those of us joining for the first time, we can all be on the same page. On some of the platforms that have been created, I see some people asking questions, why this, why not this, and all that. Um, so I think uh, for better understanding, it's good I recap what we did in series one and series two. Here we go. For series one, which was the topic for series one was living your passion, living your passion. There, we were told that the business of agribusiness is for future millionaires. We were told that future millionaires in the economy are no longer going to come from oil and gas. That agribusiness is the in thing. Recall also that we were told that agribusiness needs our time, our attention, our dedication, our commitment. We were told also that for it to succeed, you need to see it as a business, a full-time business for that matter. You need to be passionate, that is the thing. You need to be passionate about the agribusiness. If you're not passionate about it, you just want to do it because you see people going into agribusiness, you're not likely to make a success of it. But if you're passionate about it, you will now see how easy it is to key in, run it as a business and make a very good success of it. Just an example, if you are a woman that does not naturally like children, of course, some people don't like children. Some people feel that children are very messy and shouldn't come around them. Please, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I can hear you. I don't know. The I can hear you, just a few people, and uh, I think they need to check their, they need to check their yes. mic. If you're hearing me, it's not from my end, then. Yes, I, I'm hearing. Should I go ahead? Please. Yes, please. Okay. So, like I was saying, um, you will agree with me that uh, a woman that does not like children, you will start wondering how come a woman will not like children of course some women don't like children how do you know when you have when you have children around the lady that uh, feels that the children are a bunch of mess that they are perturbing her peace she keeps pushing them away she doesn't want her dress to be messed up and then you will know that the person does not like children and if a person does not like children, there's no how the person can be a good mother. In same vein also, you need to be very passionate about agribusiness for you to make a success of it. 
If you're just going into agribusiness because that is the in thing, well, you may end up being playing at the surface level, but you won't get the, the benefits meant for deep players, those that are entrenched in it, those that are very passionate in it, those that want to create a niche for themselves and make a good success of it. So we were told during that lesson one that we need to be very passionate about this agribusiness for, for us to make a success of it. Then that takes me to our lesson two. Lesson two was export market identification. Having gone through lesson one, we were given a case study. And that case study was assessed. Um, over 90% of the class got the, their answers right, and that qualified them to continue to lesson two. In lesson two, which was export market identification, we, we were told that for us to continue on this path we have chosen, we need to be consistent. We need to be focused. We need to have a target of what we want to achieve and accomplish within a set, set time frame. We need to have a zeal to produce results. We're also told that if we are talking about exports, it means our market is definitely outside Nigeria. You can't be doing business in Nigeria buying and selling in Nigeria and you say you're into exports. No, it means the buying starts from here and then the selling is abroad for it to qualify as exports. We were also told that we need to identify our primary and secondary markets. Know the requirements of the market. What does the market need? In what form? How do I assess this market? What certifications do I need to penetrate this market? This market, do they prefer their products fresh? Do they want it dried? Do they want it crushed? Do they want it processed? In what form? You need all that for you to venture into a particular market. Then we were encouraged to start with very low risk products. It doesn't make sense if you want to go into export for the first time. Talking about low risk products now, uh, you can't go and start a uh, export business with a, pro a products like uh, yam, fresh yam, yam tubers. Some people try to do that and they burnt their fingers. So if you are a new entrant into the export business, your best bet is to start with low risk products. I remember one of us asking, please Ma, can you tell us what these low risk products are? I mentioned uh, a few and uh, I had expected those questions to continue pouring in for me to give answers to them, address them and explain on the uh, various uh, platforms created. So if you still have such concerns, please, I encourage you to speak out on the platforms so that uh, uh, you will learn and others will also benefit. During that lesson two, we said under market identification, you need to put your house in order. What are your strengths and weaknesses? What do you have in house? What are you going to source outside for you to make this business work? We're also told that you need to know the products you have decided to go into. That product, what seasons do they have it available in Nigeria? In what quantities, which states, which regions 
are the producers? Who are my suppliers? How do I get this product? Am I going to be the farmers to buy or I'm going to appoint agents? You need to ha have all that information in your palm, even as you approach your export market. Then we're told again, that you need to make your investigation concerning mode of sending it to your market. Is it going to be by air? Is it going to be by road? Are you air freighting? In what type of packaging? Is it going to be in, 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 in uh, veggies or jute bags or or double propylene bags or cartons or whatever. Then what selling method do you need to penetrate that market or are you targeting? Do you think abroad they will recognize your company name and then they, they, your customer will feel comfortable dealing with you as a Nigerian? Or wouldn't you rather deal with an agent which means an established overseas company that can now broker on your behalf and speak on your behalf. Of course, this will be free. You will need to pay agency. In a nutshell, these were what we learned for lessons one and uh, two. At the end of that lesson two, we gave a case study. You know what the case study is? I don't know how many of us attempted it, but uh, the solution is D. Solution to the case study is D. It says, send the goods to Kotonu and hope to sell it there. That is the correct answer. Because some of us are joining us for the first time today, I will pause for a page, maybe five minutes and take questions so that we will all be on the same page as we progress in this uh, mentoring series. So I'll pause for five minutes for you to, to ask questions. Okay, uh, please, you, you can, Please feel free to ask question by raising your hands, please. Then we'll call you five minutes so that we feel. Ogechi Uche. Ogechi, unmute yourself and. Okay, okay. Um, thank you, um, Your Royal Majesty, um, Mrs. Uh, um, Chidomokoro, and happy birthday too. Um, thank you for actually inviting us to this forum. It's a wonderful one. This is my first time of joining. The question I want to ask, because uh, while you were asking this question, I wasn't there initially. You noted that there are some low-risk products, you know, if you're a starter. I permit me to ask if you can just refresh us on those low-risk products so that we can flow, follow through. Okay. Thank you, uh, Your Royal Majesty. Uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, Olushegu Olushegu Fumito Fumito, can you please speak up? Yes, uh, Your Royal Majesty, I really appreciate uh, this this forum for the enlightening and because when people have bound their hands, as you mentioned, that there are some products that are low risk that that individual has asked for it. But also we told us that we need to identify primary and secondary markets and uh, fresh. Either we want to have a product fresh, dry, process etc. And I think we need more clarification on that uh, low, low risk product. That's number one. Then number two, we talked about our commitment into this farming 
uh, farming business, this uh, agri agri business that we must be committed and our time must be devoted. How do we go about it? Some of us that are still working somewhere, working for an individual, you know, individual used to commit, uh, we used to commit most of our time to their to their own business. How how can we uh, be really involved in this agri business and be successful? Because you tell, this thing needs our time. So how can we go about it? Please, we need more enlightenment on this. Thank you very much. Tony will be, Tony will be, after that, if a fair, a fair. Tony, are you there? Tony will be, okay, if Tony is not ready, if, if, if please go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Ah, okay, good evening all. Yeah, good evening, please speak up. Yeah, madam, quite an insightful one, I appreciate it. I'd like to ask, you mentioned uh, the issue of having an agent over, overseas. You see, some people have uh, had agents and at the end they were swindled or duped. So how do we get about a reliable agent? Because I'm looking at uh, going into exportation of a lead, lead ore, or the problem has been the agent. So how do we get a, a reliable agent overseas? Thank you. If it Go ahead. After that, Bashiru. Talk of lead. And I want to be proud of. Effie. Even cashew, cocoa, it should be among the real lead. Okay, you're still talking. Okay. Okay, Karen. Thank you. You thought you were saying it. That's why I wanted them to shift back so that they won't be hearing. Speak louder, please. Tony, are you still talking? No, 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 I'm done, I'm done. Okay, FA, FA, after FA, we have Bashiro, then we close, we, we move on to the next item. I, I am talking, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, your your network is very bad. Okay, Bashiru, uh, F F A. I think your your network is very bad. Can you just type type the message? I'm speaking already. Thank you, Yoroya, and you are celebrating birthday. I thank you for this support. But I can I can hear you. Okay, now I can hear you. Hello. Go ahead. Bashiru. Bashiru, go ahead. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, Madam, we, we are happy to have you with us. It's a pleasure. But my own question here is, in the first uh, series of our discussion, you mentioned mentoring. I love to be, you know, one of those that you mentor physically. It's not a issue of, let us, uh, if you have a setup that physically you can come for the mental issues so that we can get, uh, you know, this thing properly and kickstart a business that can change the life of many of us. Thank you. Okay, so I think uh, that's all, that's all the questions. Yeah. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, today actually is not my birthday. My birthday is on the 28th of um, this month, 28th of this month. That's next weekend. Uh, but I had cause to celebrate with a handful of friends that I may not be seen on that 28th. So today was the only opportunity to meet with them and celebrate. And they, they too know that today is not my birthday. Be that as it may, thanks so much for your thoughtful wishes. I appreciate. I go straight to Ogechi Uche's uh, question. She wanted to know what products do you consider low risk products? I will start by explaining to you why.
Öyle değil mi? Adam, there's something your your mic is uh... Is it okay? Yes. Is it okay? Yes, I can hear you now. No, it's off again. Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. So, if you are hearing me, I I said uh, for Ogechi Uche, I will start by telling you, explaining to you why a product like Yam is a very very high risk product. If you buy Yam, even the Yam you consume in your family and you decide to keep it on the cement floor on the bare cement floor or your tile floor without putting it say on the shelf within two weeks and will start cooking itself is it not so now imagine where you are you put that yam in a metal container. You know what 20 feet containers, 40 feet containers are like. The body is completely metal. So now imagine where you stuff yam inside that type of container and you're sending it across the sea for a period of up to, maybe a period up to, up to, um six weeks or ten weeks or more do you think it will survive definitely it won't so as a new entrant it will be a very wrong step for you to take by starting with something like yam exportation talking about the low risk products no product is completely risk free but there are some with very low risk and uh, it's those ones that are low risk that my company actually deals in. You talk about uh, something like dried hibiscus flower. Yes, cashew not to some extent, but you have to understand, uh, you know, have good knowledge of the oil contents of cashew nuts. You talk about sesame seed, you talk about uh, um, dried split ginger, uh, you talk about hibiscus flower, you talk about gum arabic, all these, they have their own individual challenges. So if you understand the product, what to expect, the chemical components, the, what moisture level is allowable, then the risk is far, far easier to handle than going for something like yam or say raw um, raw cassava. Then that takes me to Olushegu's question. So Olushegu, I've answered part of your concern. Then the second one, you said identification of primary and secondary market. Did you attend our lesson one and two? He's already, we've, we've muted everyone. We have to meet everyone. Okay, okay. So I wouldn't know if you attended our uh, lesson two, it specifically talked about secondary and primary markets, where I gave the example of uh, China. You know, most Nigerian products that you see on the shelf in African stores abroad, 
they have Ghanaian levels, whereas you can swear that those products originated from Nigeria. So it means if you can't export to the US directly, you might as well export to Ghana as your primary market. Who will now export to the US? Your product will still be there, but not in your, in your, on your level. So that's what I will say to that. You know, we have uh, eaten much into today's uh, lecture time, but we need to deal with this matter for us to be on the same page. Um, your third question was um, that in what I have said, stated that I said agribusiness cannot be a part-time business. Yes, to a large extent, it cannot be a part-time business. Uh, if it's a part-time, what you reap is also part-time. You reap, you reap uh, bits and pieces. You won't. Get, it's uh, crunches that fall off the table that you will be able to pick. You won't get to the main menu. But be that as it may, your concern, you're still in business. And uh, how do you get involved? It's better, of course. <laughs> it takes a lot of courage for you to take the leap. So it's better while you're still in your productive age for you to go into this business than to wait until you are retired before you now go into the business. It won't work. You won't even have the energy. You won't have the zeal. That passion, then at that stage, you're just looking for something to hang on, which negates what we have been preaching. So, but if you are in business, agric export is capital intensive. If you're in business that is paid employment or you have a consultancy firm and you want to still be involved in agri, you can key in as a financier, you can uh, do partnership with some other person that has all the time to nurture it and attend to it. Then, if, uh, I don't know whether it's Efe that asked this question because uh, the moderator kept saying Efe and Bashiru, so I don't know who asked it, but it's either Efe or Bashiru. You said um, overseas agents and then mentoring. Overseas agents and mentoring. Well, you said you've been trying to You've been trying to export lead, lead or so for some time, and uh, it hasn't been easy. I would take us, there are so many things. There are so many non-oil products you can export, but we are narrowing down our concern to just agri produce exports. But be that as it may, for a reliable agent, you talk to your mentor, you talk to your mentor. Your mentor will tell you how you can go about it to get genuine agents. Bashiri wants to do physical mentorship. I am available, Bashiru. I am available. Our facilities, my company facilities are also available. But the experience uh, we have is that, uh, you know, when mentees are invited to have a, a feel of what the physical way housing operations or um, forwarding, forwarding at the wharfs, what the physical activities are like, somehow, maybe in a class of up to a thousand as we have now, only two or three people will show up. So if you actually have the passion, the zeal to pursue this business, I'm available, our company facilities are available, both at the seaport where we have an export desk, our purchasing uh, uh, facilities up north, um, you will be given um, full access 
to ask questions, to go around, to check whatever, and uh, that will help in the mentoring process. Thank you. Can I con Paige, can yes. I continue? Yes, yes. Okay. So today, our topic for discussion is sourcing and obtaining a sports contract. Having, up, having identified your target market, whether you want to do primary market or secondary market, it might be a lot easier to do exporting to Ghana than exporting to America. So having identified the market you want to um, export to, and then you need to source and obtain your export contract. So the third step towards becoming an agri export exporter is to source for and obtain your export contracts or contracts. Definition. Export contract, please pay attention to this. Export contract is a purchase order between two parties consenting to buy and sell goods across country borders. The contract must be signed by both the buyer, importer, and the seller, exporter. In this case now, we are the exporters because this mentoring is about exports. So we are playing from the exporter perspective. The contract will specify the terms and conditions of the selling and buying agreement. The basic information that a standard contract contains. There's no stereotyped way that a contract must be structured, but then there are basic information that must be in the contract for you to call it an export contract, an export order. Hmm? That document, that agreement must have the seller's name and address. It must also have the buyer's name and address. Then uh, you can include this. I omitted it in the write up. It will also have the contract number, contract number, or purchase order number. It, it means the same contract number or purchase order number. Then it will also have the commodity of transaction with full description. So if we are talking about uh, CCMA seed, the color, the size, moisture content, ash content, allowable percentage of foreign materials, place of origin must be contained in that contract. Then the total quantity of the goods that that contract covers has to be stated too. It can either be in grams, it can be in kilograms, it can be in metric tons, with some percentage plus or minus provision. Reason being that at the point of signing that contract, uh, you cannot be that accurate. You may, so there is usually you know, percentage plus or minus, you can supply 20 tons plus or minus 5% or 10%. Make sure that that clause is there. Then the packaging, the type of packaging has to be specified in the contract documents also. Is it going to come in propylene bags? Is it going to be double propylene bags? Is it jute bags? Is it cartons? Is it badges? Whatever. The pricing, that is the product price, agreed pricing per quantity has to be stated also. Total amount involved has to be stated, plus or minus, because there's a plus or minus clause. So there will be a plus or minus depending on what you ship at the end of the day. 
then mode of threat. The contract will say that uh, maybe it's going to be fulfilled through uh, by sending the goods by land or by sea or by air. The shipment period will be stated also. It's usually a range, maybe within one month, within two months, or within uh, three months. Then ports of shipment and ports of delivery will be contained in the contract document. Mode of payment, is it going to be cash on delivery, cash against documents, bills for collection, is it going to be um, LC, whatever? It will be stated there also. Then if transshipment is allowed, it will be stated there. If it's not allowed, it will also be stated there. Expiration dates of the contract will be contained in that document. What will nullify this contract? It will be stated there. What are the penalty clauses? It will be stated there. Then type of contract, is it a third party contract or irrevocable contract or whatever? It will be stated there. We move on. You can get export contract by focusing on your target markets through one, emails. You can use emails. You can use internet search engines like Google, like Yahoo, what have you. You can also go to International Chambers of Commerce sites, embassies and their commercial session. Um, embassies like, uh, say, American Embassy in Nigeria, they have a session that deals purely with and Greek. You can attend the focused workshop like you're doing today. Trade associations, you can also visit trade associations. It might be your personal contacts through friends or relatives that are abroad that know who needs what. They can reach you if they know you have the zeal to do this uh, business. Then referrals from existing exporters. So I may have um, more orders that my company can handle, then I can sublate or give those that I know are serious with the uh, export uh, uh, business to handle some. You can also attend international exhibitions and trade uh, shows. Those are expensive. In this day and time where the world has become a global village, you may not need to travel for all this. Even international exhibitions and trade shows are being done virtually. So if we spend less time on what's happening and use it to focus on things like this, we will be amazed at what results we'll be producing in, in a, a passion sector you have decided to take a look at. Then actions you need to take, needful actions I call them. When in doubt, please ask your mentor. In this forum now, I'm your mentor. So if there's anything you're not too sure, we have a platform, speak out. If you sp it's better you speak out on the platform so that others will learn. Uh -huh. Others may have similar concerns. So when you speak out and I respond, we are all getting trend. We are all drawing closer and nearer to our vision of becoming agric uh, product uh, exporters. Then check your emails very often, every day at least. Check your emails for responses. If you have written a lot of mails, I mean, you need to be checking your mails often because overseas, when they send mails and you don't respond, they will not take you as a serious business concern. Before you answer the buyer's questions, please 
so that you don't answer wrongly, especially if you've not done export before. You can private chat. You know, that one is private talk, private chat to your mentor or an existing exporter. The only thing is that a lot of people don't want to share their knowledge. So you may, I'm not speaking for everybody. Some people may not want to share their knowledge, what they know about the industry. But for me, I have an open door policy. So whatever you want to learn, I teach you. By telling you what I know, it doesn't make me to know less. The only thing I've succeeded in doing is to prevent you from making the mistakes I made learning too. So when in doubt, talk to your mentor. If you are getting any serious inquiry, let your mentor guide you so that you don't give the wrong answers. Respond to the buyer's inquiries promptly. If a buyer is asking you, um, a ton of say Zobo, how much is it? FOB, or how much is it? C and F, and you don't know. Please talk to your mentor. But these prices, most commodity prices are internationally quoted. The exporters in Nigeria will also tell you that they range. What I'll give you, if you talk to me, what I'll give you is a range that will enable you not to make losses. So if you're prudent, if you're shrewd, you will not know where to save so that the higher savings you have, the higher your profits are margin. Keep in constant touch with established exporters. Explore new and niche markets. So by way of encouragement and my conclusion, I have said no more excuses. No more excuses. Good thing, the year, although we are in the first quarter of the year, we have spent just three months. So it's not late in the day for you to take up this new passion. You can still do something. So I said no more excuses. In January, I had some mentees saying, I will surely start. In February, what did they tell me? I will start soon. This is March, drawing to an end. <laughs> what are they still telling me? I still have it in mind to start. With this type of story by April, I expect to hear I am expecting something before starting. In May, the story continues. I will start any moment from now. June, wow. So you don't face that. Mm. I no go waste time again. July, ha, something came up, but I won't fail to start by month end. Eight months of the year, August. <laughs> I go surprise on this August because ha, I'm starting big. September, definitely, this is my September to remember. I am starting next week. October, <laughs> my house rent is due this month, so I will start after paying. November. That is the 11th month of the year. If not for that, my house rent that I paid, I just paid. I would have started in October. But this month, no go past me. In December, which is the last year of the month here, too many bills to pick this month. I give it a push from January next year. And the cycle continues like that, on and on, on and on. So my dear participants, uh, mentees, look, excuses are irrelevant when your needs are paramount, you will agree with me. 
Many have made millions while you give excuses. You don't withdraw excuses from the bank, do you? You can be a billionaire either in excuses or in money. But please note, success is reserved for action takers. Those who give excuses will soon be excused. My word of encouragement, activate yourself. Do something so that something will not do you. Good attend. I didn't say this. This is a quote I lifted from one of uh, uh, the men of God I cherish. His name is uh, written there. So having said that, we come to the end of today's training. But we go to our case study. Before the case study, do we take questions or questions after the case study? So let me, uh, Paige, what do we do? Questions before the case study or after the case study? How do you want it? Page platform, please let us know. Question before the case study. Okay. So I'm done with my presentation for today, except for the case study. So I'm here for your questions. Um, so questions. So let's take questions and see how they take it. We're going to take it the same way. So raise up your hands if you have questions, so we unmute you. Do you have questions? I can't see your hands though. Okay, good. I can see uh, Olua Shil Fumito. Please unmute yourself. Okay, go ahead and talk. After that, I have John Agana. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, all. Uh, Our Royal Majesty, I really appreciate you once more. Yes, there was a time I wanted to export Shaku. I've tried a friend, I have a, a brother that was doing that in you know, I mean, uh, your stage, he used, to, he used to bring it down to Lagos for export and address. But to, to locate the, the, the buyers over there, well, the thing was very difficult that time because later I discovered that they said they were rejecting Nigeria Shaku because of all this, uh, all these people were doing that they were, they were adding uh, all this uh, powder form or whatever. They just put uh, all those that are not okay, all those shakos that are not strong. They put it inside container and learned that they were rejecting our shakos. I want to know the shakos do are they still accepting our shako now or not? Shako export. Are they accepting at the end? I need a link also. Maybe I need to come to you directly for mentoring because this mentoring of a team, I think that's the that's the link. That's the major link here. God bless you. Thank you. We have John Agana after you favor OT. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, th thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm highly impressed by the presenter, our Real Majesty. Uh, as so much, I'm, I'm also impressed by our last words of complaints and postponement of uh, making efforts. But I have a simple question. My question is, in an attempt for us not to defy our actions, what could be the startup capital to start up this export, uh, export uh, tr trading? What could be the startup capital? If we can know the, 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 the range of the startup capital, I'll be impressed. Because most persons will say, most reasons, why people, most reasons why people may not want to come in is because maybe they don't know the range of the startup capital. They feel maybe it involves billions of Naira and all that and all that. Thank you very much. Favor, after favor, the next person is favor, Uti, then uh, Uge, patient. Madam, for the training, 
It's quite educative. Uh, please, what are the keywords we can use when we go to search for links, as in using the internet search engines? Then two, how can we actually get this contact? Because most of the time, your program for somebody like me, you have gone to the extent of registering company, getting my suppliers, session on the web. Yet to get a serious contact. So, how do we go about that, my sourcing the buyers? Thank you very much. So, uh, who gave patience after that? Joseph at this week. Okay, good evening. Yeah. I am very happy to be part of this program. My name is actually Udwa Kobong Sunday. I'm using patience Uge's facility, uh, facility device. My question here is, um, I am one of the people that have just attended this for the first time. I wasn't in model one, I wasn't in model two. Therefore, I'm wondering, is it possible for us to get um, training materials for model one and model two, or how do we go about it? Thank you. That I will tell you that we'll send you the materials immediately after uh, this evening, when we start sending, we'll send it along the slides Format slides and the videos for the former ones. Okay. Thank you Thank very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Adesui. Then we, after that, we have Abdurrahman Bello. Uh, thank you, Madam Aroya Majesty. Um, it is quite encouraging, and uh, your word of wisdom uh, cannot be dispensed with. Um, I've been with this program uh, from uh, series one to date, and uh, I'm really motivated, though I'm in diaspora anyway, but uh, I have all my link down to Nigeria to do what I can do. Um, I just want to ask a simple question. Um, is, is it possible for me to get your contact so that uh, we can, I can have a talk with you, especially in the area of mentoring, so that uh, uh, you can be a guide for me. I, I really need your help in that area. So, and I will appreciate if you can be of help to me in that regard. Thank you. Uh, I have Abdurrahman. After you, after Abdurrahman, we should have Tony Wobi. Wobi. Hello, good evening, madam. I sincerely appreciate this presentation. My question is this. I want to know how we can get this export license because I believe exporting all these products, we don't just enter the market without the export license. And secondly is that I understand that there are some FDA certification assuming the product is going to US. How do we get those certification and thirdly is that is it is it possible that we that we are coming in for the first time is it possible that we can the the buyer will have confidence in us without having any guarantee guarantor from someone like you that has been in the business in the past and i want to also ask how 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 is it possible or what, what would be the capital if we are going for this low risk? What would, what would be the minimum capital that someone will require so that we can kickstart this business? And fourthly is that a venture, a business, a, 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 an enterprise, a company has been registered in an enterprise name. Is it, is it allowable or the company must be a limited liability for the confidence, for the buyer to repose a confidence in such a company? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Tony will be after you. We have after Tony will be. We have to do a at King Pelu. Yeah, hello, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, yeah. Good evening, madam. Quite professional and uh, insightful. Uh, I want to observe, I know that uh, agri business is quite risky. And uh, for so, every businessman wants a commensurate uh, return on the risk he's taking. From your wealth of experience, man, I'd like, to, I'd like you to share with us what are those products that you feel will give you commensurate profit vis-a-vis -vis the risk in agri venture you are taking. Thank you. So, thank you. We, we, so we talk back, I think there's a... Hello. Yes, go ahead. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Okay, what I want to, um, good afternoon. Good evening, Israel Majesty. The question I want to ask is that, is it possible for Yuma to decentralize the, ment the mentors? As in, when we have lectures like this, the problem that we face generally is the follow-up. Export business is a very good one that can even take uh, Nigeria to a better position. But when we don't have people following us up or guiding us as the thing goes, especially when you start with the registration, you get hooked up somewhere, you know the system in Nigeria. If we have people that are guiding you, following you up and you know people you can easily run to that are very close to you. So if the mentor, if it is in mentorship is decentralized, maybe according to local government or whatever or state, and then there's a kind of follow up and you know, we can then push through most of the, the problems we encounter, it will help. And you know, the step-by-step -step procedure, like the packaging and everything, some of us, you don't even know what and what to do, but we have the passion for this business. So I don't know what um, Israel Majesty can do about that. If there's any provision, even if it involves, you know, paying for, you know, for the experience, going into all this uh, procedure, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. That's all. That's all the question. Sorry. Let me see you. Maybe that's... Hmm. Hmm? Have I? <laughs> what did I do here? Okay, sorry. Oh. Uh, sorry, you, I think I you were muted. Good. Okay, I've I've unmuted myself. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, I said, let's take these ones. Let me attend to these questions before you allow more people to ask questions in case my answers will address their concerns. Okay. Okay. So the, the last lady that asked the question, sorry, I didn't get your name. Um, I didn't get your name, but when I'm addressing your question, I'm, eh? To look at a king pelu. So I okay. can just say to look, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So the first question uh, was from Oluwa Sheo, who said he wanted to export charcoal, but um, it didn't work out. So he now wanted to know if charcoal is still an exportable uh, product. Yes. But if you are thinking of tomorrow's business, I will advise you don't uh, focus too much on charcoal. If you are with us at the onset of this uh, series three training today, you heard me state that charcoal is amongst what is called uh, uh, fossil fuel. And because of carbon emission, that the world over, they are thinking of replacing such sources of energy, going for clean energy. And I gave some examples of the clean energy. So instead of putting your effort and energy 
in something that you know will soon be out of vogue, it's better you refocus. Remember again, at the onset of this training today, I said food is the end thing, is sustainable, is big business, is good business. Reason being that Microsoft is here to manufacture an alternative to food. So, so long as you need food, the business is there. For charcoal, you see what is happening to charcoal. So you can't put all your energy in it because sooner or later, it will be phased out. Then, Agana, John Agana, you said in an attempt not to defer action, that what is the startup capital? Hmm. I don't know whether you were with us for lesson one and lesson two. Before we talk about startup capital, you need to understand what you want to do, how to go about it before you now see the capital involvement. We cannot, uh, we cannot start talking about capital involvement now when there is a, a whole series dedicated to funding. So let's leave it at that, post that question until we get to that series number that is purely funded. So if even if you don't have your own personal funds, you'll be told avenues through which you can get funding and how you will navigate that uh, bridge when you get there. Favor, Favor wanted to know the precise sites um, where she can get information that will be posted on the WhatsApp forum. If you're not on the WhatsApp forum already, uh, I'm sure Paige will send out the link. You join, ask that question again on the WhatsApp platform the answer will be given so that others will also get information. For um, Mrs. Either Mrs. or Miss Sunday, you, you wanted the training materials. Paige has attended to that. They will always give you, they are very thorough professionals like you. So they, they know how to send out the slides and uh, the training materials to all participants. Mr. Joseph is in diaspora. Uh, he wants to get my contact. Please, Paige. Yep. I give you liberty to share my contacts, my email, my phone numbers with uh, all participants. Okay so that they can reach me. But I encourage people to talk on the platform so that others will learn. In that way, you know, everybody is learning instead of uh, hoarding information. Hoarding information is not good. Abdul Rahman wants to know how to get a sports license for the Nigerian, uh, economy, if you want to export out of Nigeria, you will need to talk to Export Promotion Council. But if you go and obtain export, if you go there and fill their form, they will give you a sports license. But if that license expires after one year and you've not used it, they are not going to renew it. So I will suggest you understand the nitty gritty of the business of what to do before you go for the license. You wanted to know the minimum capital also. We will deal with that when we are doing uh, one of the series that will be purely funded. Then, uh, Abdul Rahman, you also wanted the type of company needed for the agri export business. It's a limited liability company. That is what Nigerian government recognizes. So you can't do it as an enterprise business. You can't do it as a person. You just have to do it 
at a limited liability company. A sport promotion council will also not give you license if you're not a limited liability company. Um, Tony, you wanted to know which uh, products are low risk with uh, high profit margins. <laughs> I know. I'm suspecting you must be an accountant. You know, accountants, they don't like taking risk. At the same time, they want to maximize their gains. Uh, there are really no such uh, products. So it depends on when you buy and who you are selling to and what time of the year you buy and what savings you are able to make. That discussion, let's take it further in our WhatsApp uh, platform. Tolu, you need follow-up. That is the only way to make a success of the mentorship. That's why we are here. That's why I'm here. And that's why the platforms have been created. Uh, by the time we run through lesson 10 of this mentoring series, you would have gained so much that you know that you're being, being followed up. And uh, on the WhatsApp platforms, we are not going to close them down. It continues. And you learn, you ask, you are being pulled by a, a strong hand in quotes. So you will get to your destination with that vision. Thank you. More questions? OK. Do we have more questions? I, I, uh, I think, do you still have questions? I think we we'll... John Agana. Okay, uh, to do look by this, you have more questions. Olaf Chen Kumito, do you still have questions? I see you raising your hand. Uh, just, no, I'm just typing. No more questions. Okay, no more questions. So, do we have, yes. John Agana, do you have more questions? I see you raising your hand. No more questions, sorry. Excellent. So, all the questions have been attended to. Yes. But there's one, one person that said that she, on the chat window, the person said he got an uh, export license and it expired. I think that has also been addressed. Yeah. Okay. So that means we are good to go. So let's go to the let's go to the let's go to the case study. Okay. The case study for this um, lesson three is I am quite excited at the thought of now doing a sport business and can't wait to strike my first deal. To this effect, I have been sending lots of correspondence to all and sundry. Hmm. Eventually, I have gotten the much needed responses on my 60 bags of chili pepper. Remember my 60 bags of chili pepper, which I bought at the rate of 1,000 per bag. I have received the following answers or information. One, my bank manager mentioned my 60 bags of dry chili pepper stock to a customer of the bank who has instantly lodged payments into my account at the rate of 3,000 Naira per bag, an instant 200% profit. Two, the agent that bought the goods for me has sold and collected the, the money on my behalf into his account, so not my account, at the rate of 3,500 per bag. Mr. Yakasi 
says he has paid money into my account at the rate of 5,000 per bag and just waiting for me to send the goods to Lagos to his, for his export shipment, for his export shipment. For a Beninoir called to say a local woman in her village that does not do export is interested in the stock and has given a letter to that effect. Five, I want to leave the goods in the warehouse, hoping that the price might improve further. Which step best addresses my passion? Justify. Thank you all for your time. Thank you for your attention also. It's been a pleasure spending uh, these two hours with us. But my prayer, what will make me happier is to see younger exporters, people that are more passionate about exports, agri-export business than myself. People that will fly Nigeria's flag all over the world, exporting Nigerian products. People that will not be ashamed to be called Nigerians. People that can hold their heads high anytime, anywhere, all over the world and say, yes, I am a Nigerian. Despite the fact that I'm a Nigerian, my income is in hard currency. I am proud to be a Nigerian. With this, I close today's session and uh, hope that our series four lectures will uh, be coming up, hopefully in a fortnight, all things being equal. With that, I say happy weekend, everyone. Thank you to Page Platform for availing your facility for this mentoring series. Please more grease to your elbow. Don't forget to do your case study. As you do also, um, Page Platform will give you the contact where to send your answers to. Thank you, good night and God bless you. So thank you so much, Madam, for making our time to attend to our, uh, our Nigerians in this form. Also, thank to all the members that made the out time for their very busy schedule to attend. We are very sorry that our facility right now, we have a limited space compared to the, the turnout. So we will continue to see how we can expand. And uh, we, we currently have integrated YouTube channel, our YouTube channel to the platform. So we believe that we can reach thousands of people through that platform. We also have a Facebook page, which we intend to use subsequently to also expand. Uh, we believe that with this technology, we'll be able to reach out to more audience than the, the, the limited uh, number that we are reaching. So let's continue to expand and learn from the, the present and uh, touch lives around. We believe that what you've learned today, you'll be able to pass it along to others and invite others to come on board so that we can all do this together. We, together, we can wipe away poverty from Nigeria. Together, we can wipe away joblessness in this country. Together, we can share through love. Currently, the country is uh, facing different kind of challenges, but when we all rise above poverty level, I'm sure most of those challenges will be put to, to rest. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you to my page crew for their support because it's a team thing, team effort. With the team effort, that's what we are. We believe strongly in Nigeria. We believe that every part of Nigeria is very important. Every individual in Nigeria is important. All the attendees add, continue to add positive value wherever you find yourself so that we can truly raise Nigeria's flag up. Thank you so much for your time and God bless us all. So we'll reach out to you through giving you the slides and the videos as requested through the emails you provided. Thank you and good night. <laughs>